Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. Hey, what's the difference between on initialized and on parameters set? And why would I load my data in one versus the other? And what can I do asynchronous work? And how will I make sure my component stops working and exits gracefully when it's no longer needed? Well, in this episode of Blazor Train, all your component lifecycle questions will be answered, and you'll become a better Blazor developer. That's all happening right now, right here on Blazor Train. Blazor Train! All right, let's get started with lifecycle stuff. This is going to be fun, I promise you. Uh, so I've got a standard Blazor server application here. There's nothing crazy about it. I just created the default template comes up and we're in index.razor. So let's get some code on the screen and we can actually start talking about it. Now before I do anything, you're going to notice that I've got some squiggles here. And that's because uh, this is from system.diagnostics. So what I'm going to go do is add a using statement to my underscore imports razor file right there. And now system diagnostics, that using statement will apply to any code in any code block in any page or component. All right, so everything else is the same, but I got a code block here and we're overriding four virtual events or virtual methods, actually we should call them, in the component base. So let's take a look at component base, and I can do that by having my inherent inherits statement up here. This is uh, kind of redundant, but at least it gives us something to press F12 on, and we can actually see what component base looks like. And you can see that there's a bunch of protected virtual void and virtual task methods here. So because they're virtual, we can override them. Now there's a couple things we're not going to talk about. Build render tree we won't talk about and should render. Uh, and invoke async uh, is a method that you can call. And state has changed is a method you can call. But we're interested in these virtual methods here. So set parameters async is the first one followed by on initialized and then there's an async version of that too on parameters set and there's an async version of that and then on after render so those are the ones that we're going to be looking at here i uh, don't need this actually set parameters async is the first thing that gets called every time parameters change every time some component or page gets loaded uh, this gets called first on initialized happens every time and only when the component or page is initialized so subsequent calls to that page or component do not uh, fire on initialized you can only hook that the very first time it comes into being and guess what it's time for a tip So your tip is this, in a Blazor server app, the on initialized and on parameters set will by default be called twice. And that's because in underscore host.cshtml, pre-rendering is turned on by default right here, render mode for the app, server pre-rendered. What pre-rendering does is it makes static HTML for the page the first time that it's opened and that means that there's less time uh, f between when the user navigates to the page and the page uh, DOM is displayed all right so it speeds things up immediately after that happens then the actual the static components get replaced with uh, interactive components and so it gives the illusion that the app is more responsive than it actually is. So I'm going to do you a favor and copy this little comment in here so that you can see. Now if you want to have consistent behavior between a Blazor server application and a Blazor 
WebAssembly application, you can just turn this off. All right. This is totally up to you. This isn't guidance. I'm just turning it off so that we don't have multiple calls to these uh, overridable virtual methods. So in each of these, I've got a debug right line that tells me what's happening. Um, one reason for this is if you're in a Blazor WebAssembly application, you wouldn't be able to just set a breakpoint here like we can in a Blazor server application as of today. And it's the end of June, okay? As of today, uh, you cannot do any debugging in these uh, lifecycle events just yet in Blazor WebAssembly. So that's why we have debug right line. Let's take a look at what happens. All right, so I'm going to zoom in down to my output window. And you can see set parameters async happened first, followed by on initialized, on parameters set, and then on after render. So let's talk about these things. Set parameters async you may or may not know about, but this is really the first thing that happens before parameters are set. And it happens every time, not just when the page or component is initialized the first time. So it's interesting because this is async, if I move this call to the base up to the top and we call it again, the debug messages will come in a different order. First we'll get an on initialized and then an on parameters set and then set parameters async. Why is that? Because on initialized and on parameter set are getting called here. All right? So you should probably just make a mental note of that. Uh, and also, if we turn this back to server pre rendered and run it again, we're going to get some duplicate calls on those initialized and parameter set virtual methods. Right. First comes set parameters async on initialized and on parameters set, and that's the pre-rendering. Okay, we're creating static HTML. Then once we're connected, it calls them again for the interactive versions of those, and then finally the page is rendered. All right, we'll go back to uh, server mode. All right, let's add a component to the shared folder. I'm going to add a new Razor component and call this test component. And I've got some code for it right here. Let's talk about this. We've got a message string parameter. We've got an event callback called close requested, passes a string. And we got some UI. Uh, so here's a div, and we've got some inline styling. Don't do this, but I wanted to show you what the styling was just so that there's no uh, nothing hidden from you. We've got a button that says close which calls close me which raises an event close requested passing the message back to index. Okay, The message is displayed here uh, if it is not null, if it is set. Everything else is exactly the same except that in set parameters async Message may or may not be null, so if it isn't null, we're going to display that. Otherwise, we're not. Everything is the same, everything is the same. Ah, dispose. Dispose is a life cycle event. Okay, it happens at the end of life. So, if you want it, implement idisposable and then call uh, void idisposable.dispose. So this will happen automatically. You do not have to call this. It gets called when you know the object is about to die. Dispose has been around for a long, long time. And that's why it's not part of the component base. And if you want it, there it is. We're going to use it. Now we have to change the code in our index to call and create these components. 
And the way we do this is just with a list of messages, a list of strings. And then I go through each string and I create a test component, setting the message parameter to that string and hooking close requested the event. And when close requested happens, you know, when the user cl clicks on the close button, uh, then we get this event. We remove that string from our list of strings. When we add a component, we're really just adding a message to the string list. And the message is going to be component one, component two, component three, so that we can identify them. Let's take a look. Okay. Add a component, add a component, add a component, close the component, close the component, close the component. All right, now let's take a look and actually see what gets set here. Here's component one, I just created this. So here's our uh, page. This is where it started right here. Uh, set parameters async on initialized on parameters set on after render true then I added a component so I get set parameter async not for the page but for that component now we don't have that message parameter yet so it doesn't show you that we initialize component one only the first time uh, it's rendered and then on parameters set then the page renders itself, and then the component renders itself. Let's add another one. All right. Now component one set parameters async happens, even though component one, that message is there now, right? And then on parameters set, now set parameters async is happening for component two as is on initialized. But you see on initialized is not set for component one because it's already been initialized. Follow me? Then component two on parameter set happens. Now the page renders and this Boolean right here tells us whether it's the first render or not. So the first time the page gets rendered itself, this is going to be true. All subsequent renders, it'll be false. And the same for the components. The first component rendered uh, with the first render being false because it was already rendered once. And then the second one is rendered as such. Now what happens when we close it? We get a disposed. That's right. Component one set parameters async and on parameters set component two disposed. The page renders and then the comp the first component renders. And there it is. Now, here's something really, really interesting. What if we want to do some async work? It turns out I've got a tip for you. So here's the scenario. When a component loads, it's going to connect to a service maybe, and it's going to go into a loop. It's going to do some async stuff. And, you know, maybe it's going to pull, maybe it's going to wait for a message, something like that. But we're doing some async work, all right? We want, it, we want that to work, but we also want to be able to exit gracefully when it's time to go and get out of the loop and all of that stuff. I'm going to show that to you, but here's the tip. Asynchronous work when applying parameters and property values must occur during the on parameters set async lifecycle event. So this on parameters set can be an async. There's an async version of it. And all you have to do is change this to async task. All right, and now it's async, but we don't have any await calls in here. So let's change up the component with one that does some async work and we'll talk about it so on parameter set async here and here's the what I just did right 
and I'm going to simulate some work. Now I have a Boolean working, which is set right here. Working equals false. Everything else is the same. And if we're not working, then I'll set working to true. And I'm going to tell us that we went to work. And go into a loop while working is set to true, which means that we can set it to false somewhere else. And I'm just waiting uh, the task for half a second. So this is simulating some work. It's just going to go through that loop. Every half second it'll check whether it's working or not and exit if working gets set to false. And then we can see stopped working. So when does that happen? Guess what? Dispose. So if working, then working equals false. And now we have to give it enough time to stop, right? So we're going to wait just a little more than a half a second. And because this is not uh, async, we can't make it async, we're just going to call dot get awaiter dot get result. All right. So every single time that we add a component, we're adding something that does async work. Let's take a look here. Here's component one, set parameters async on parameters set, blah, blah, blah. Component three, went to work. All right. And if we scroll up here, this is where component two got created. And you can see component two went to work. And here you can see component one went to work. So there are actually three instances of this test component and each of them is going through this right here. If I put a breakpoint there, there it is. You can see that it's working. All right, now I'm going to dispose these. Notice that it waits a little bit of time. And let's see what happened. All right, component three stopped working. Component two stopped working, and we have the disposed, and component one stopped working. Let's just double check. Yeah, there is no more work going on. Well, I hope uh, you really enjoyed this little demo of the life cycle of Blazor components. Back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, a component is kind of like a train ride. It gets initialized when you step on board. The parameters may change while you're riding, such as how many cups of bad coffee you ingest or how many times you visit the restroom. You may do some asynchronous work while you ride, such as reading and writing emails. And when it's over, someone like me will come around and let you know, giving you a little time to wrap up your work and gracefully exit the train at the next station. Hey. Thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I dispose of myself. I'll see you next time. Blaze